My name is Lisa Skydevor Schuler with Kensington, and I am the ergonomic expert for Kensington. And alongside me, I have Rory Berry. And Rory, do you want to tell yourself, tell a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get to Graham. Sure. Hi there. My name is Rory. I am a coach, trainer, play advocate, general mischief maker, and the owner of RoaringBerry.com. Thanks, Roy. And Graham Koth is with us. Um, he and I have done a couple lives in the past, uh, but Graham, can you tell us your whole suite of services and what your passions are today? Okay, yeah. Um, right, so this is going to take two and a half hours. Uh, so I... <laughs> I'm you do a lot, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I do a lot. So um, I'm into social media and I'm also into ergonomics. And I'm into being disruptive in whatever industry I'm in. So a bit like Rory, I love a little bit of mischief. And uh, and I'm just on a little bit of a mission to make ergonomics a little bit more accessible to human mankind. And I think you've done a great job on that so far. I know we've been working together for... I guess it's been over six months now since I've connected with you on LinkedIn, Graham, and Rory was shortly after that. So you guys have both been great connections. I love the idea of LinkedIn Live where you can truly connect. So um, in the past, we've had people watching from all over the world. So if you are watching today, would love to hear from you, hear where you're watching from. And as we talk about um, some serious things and maybe some not so serious things, We'd love to know your comments and if you have any questions. Um, I think one thing always happens whenever I talk to Rory and Graham is that we are always laughing and always having a good time. So That's um, important. It's a very important it, it, thing it in really life. It really is. And one of the things that I wanted to do today is that we've been in this COVID-type lifestyle for almost a year, which if you haven't realized that, yeah, Graham looks like he just realized that. Um, we wanted to take a few minutes to determine what the positive sides of COVID are. And I know the initial reaction is, are there any? But with that being said, um, I think there are some good things that have come from COVID. And we wanted to talk about different areas of our lives because we do know that this will be a relatively new normal for us for quite some time. And if we're always focusing on the negative side, um, we're not gonna get far. So I think these two guys that are here with me today, hopefully I can also offer some insight. We can really get to how we can move forward and not stay stagnant. And as Graham said, he likes to be disruptive. Um, so I think that there's some insight there to be had as well. So um, to start out, I really wanted to start with getting to know us a little bit further. Um, and. Rory, I'll start with you. I want to ask, what's something personally that you feel like has been a positive kind of turn in your lifestyle, whether it's your friends, families, whatever, um, focusing on COVID that was not happening pre-COVID times? I guess the thing for me has been a much deeper reconnection to the planet. I've got out so much more and obviously the the there's so much data and stuff around the mental health benefits of getting out and exercise and nature. But for me, it's also just been the places where I found surprise, delight, awe, wonder and joy. And really, like, before I would just like, I've got to walk because I need steps. Now I'm like, I'm going for a walk because I want an adventure. And then the same walk that I've done a bajillion different times, when you approach it with your kid eyes on for want of a better description you can go oh i didn't know that, that was where the animal trail crossed this path look there's the buck footprint and something as little as that can really brighten a day in a big way and so for me i'd say 100 percent it's been the a deeper reconnection back to the planet and by extrapolation also doing lots of grow my own food and veg very nice very nice and how about you graham well I'd echo that to some degree and say I found exactly the same thing. I mean, we, we, we've been really surprised because we live in the countryside here and we've been really surprised at how many areas 
literally within a stone's throw of the house we've been to since COVID happened that we've never been to. <laughs> and you spend all your life trying to travel to the other side of the world, you know, dreaming about going here, there and everywhere. And actually, you just don't know what's down the road from you. Um, and we found some beautiful walks and some beautiful bits of our area that we just hadn't come to before. So that's been really good. But I think it's also reconnecting with family as well. Um, I would echo that. You know, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that, you know, we've been very lucky to do. In, um, and I, I certainly think from human mankind's point of view as well is reconnecting, humankind reconnecting with the planet. I think one of the great things that happened um, and that we saw in that first lockdown, et cetera, is we actually saw the planet change from mankind right. not trampling all over it every five minutes. Um, little things, little stories like, you know, we'd be sitting in the living room and birds would be hitting into the window. Now, the relevance of that is the fact that they would never come anywhere near the house before because there would be humans outside in cars, trying to move cars around. There'd be a lot of noise. There would be people in in the locale making noise. So they just wouldn't <laughs> go into that area. And then suddenly you see nature going, oh, I can go out now. <laughs> it's all right. There's no one there. So suddenly you see animals, creatures, uh, all sorts that you just wouldn't have seen before. And that nature was coming out. And I just I just hope there's lessons that we've learned from all of this. I just hope that we don't try and get straight back to where we were before. But certainly on the family side of things, um, you know, as someone that used to spend huge hours driving down life's motorway uh, to to destinations to, to see people and now, you know, not having to do that um that's been great to to spend more time with the children even things like i know people moan about it but even things like the homeschooling for for parents to actually really engage with their children and find out where their children are at in their learning as opposed to just hearing you know a, a report by someone else every now and again you've got to take the positive side of that and go actually that's that's brilliant that we've now reconnected with what our children really need. For sure. Yeah, I think that um, you can see where they're struggling or where they're excelling and what their specific learning style is and understanding how you can help them. And also, I think giving probably more credit to teachers than what we may have in the past, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I hear the Zooms and knowing that they have a mute button on our um, virtual calls for school probably is a great thing for a lot of teachers and wish they had that in person. But I mean, you have to give the teachers and those leadership roles a lot of credit for having all of those human beings in the same classroom not having a mute button accessible when they just want to see each other and talk to each other and everything. Um, Graham, I, I would certainly echo and Rory is you as well of really finding that simple things to seek pleasure in that we may have gone literally across the world or across the city or whatever it might be to search for those things. Um, for myself, as a mom, I always was trying to cram as many activities in a day as possible. And I felt like that was the measure of a successful parent was to do five activities on Saturday and six activities on Sunday. And if we didn't do that, I wasn't creating enough memories. So um, when COVID started, I started trying to document via photos, which truthfully only lasted about two weeks um, because I was tired of it. But I was trying to make myself thankful for um, my daughter wanted to create her own game every day. And then as a family, we had to play that at night. And going back to those basics of things that we could do within our house or within our neighborhood, finding the largest pine cone on the walk or whatever it might be. Um, and my daughter is old enough that she definitely enjoys tech and enjoys those activities, but bringing it back 
and making me realize that it's not all of the activities. It's not having that jam-packed soccer mom schedule um, and really taking that time to enjoy with the people around you that you could and that you better love because they're not leaving for who knows how long in the in the climate that we're in. Um, so, I mean, for me, that that's a huge plus there. That's really interesting to hear you say that. I mean, I, I just think, you know, we've we lost some of that innocence of simplicity and uh simple simple games simple actions that that we perhaps had as children and it's partly down to the fact that you know there was uh it was easier when we were children for our parents to leave us to just do something because mm -hmm. there weren't the shadows the dark shadows hanging over us in society etc which meant that you know we could disappear down the wreck for hours on end at night. But, you know, just getting away from tech as well is, is really important. And, you know, I think, I think some children have rediscovered some of those simple things as well in, in this period as well. Yes. You know, the tech's been useful to, to keep people occupied as well, but, you know, stuff like when I was a lad, I used to spend hours just throwing a tennis ball at a wall and catching it, you know? Yeah. We, we've kind of, we kind of lost that. But, you know, when you, when you hadn't got the resource out there, you have to go back to simple things and that's great. Yeah. And also play like in different levels. Like I've obviously in, in case anyone has missed it, I'm a huge Lego fan. Um, I haven't oh, didn't know that. Oh, I, know, well, I can't I can't see that whole shelf of them back there. <laughs> oh, the whole Sorry. shelf of them. Um, or just this kind of small one that I built next to me that's on the desk at all. No, no, no don't like it at all. No. Um, but that's uh, from Star Trek, isn't it? Um, we were friends, <laughs> man. We were friends. Yeah. Um, I thought it was but... a Disney character, like a Disney princess. Oh no! <laughs> don't don't oh, even go there. It's lovely, go there. I think. Uh, but also <laughs> like books so that disconnect from tech has been powerful mm. and that's also why i've loved the garden stuff because i got to just go and dig in the mud and like play and create and nurture and learn lessons that are out there for free through the power of creating things and one of the things that you said lisa which was really interesting i know people that have actually said when it all but goes back to the n-word they are going to have covid weekends where they don't see a damn soul yeah. because they like the leave me the hell alone now obviously for now there's going to be the whole like yeah we can go and hug people thing again at some point and there'll be like a huh and then people will suddenly go oh but i quite like the alone time <sighs> and we'll we'll recalibrate into a different dance yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely going to be finding that balance. I know I have um, Naima that said, you know, she's in the same boat as me, is just trying to figure out that busy schedule yeah. side of things. Um, and with that, I mean, I think a lot of families and a lot of individuals are going to be in that same space of we had the before, we have the now, and then looking at what that future is going to look like in a personal side could be very, very different from that before. Yeah. Um, and I mean, as you both mentioned, I truly hope that we do learn some lessons from that. Um, and, you know, we talk about bringing it back to the basics, but then I do think on the other um, extreme, the tech side of it has really helped us be able to stay connected. That if you think about if we didn't have the devices or didn't have the capabilities that we have, I think there would be a lot more mental health issues than what might already be present, feeling isolated and feeling all of those different feelings. Um, but I also think if we segue more to the workplace side and the positivity around COVID, technology plays a huge role in that aspect, being um, able to work from home more frequently. And yeah. so I open that question back to you guys, as far as a work-life balance and also into the work professional scope, what do you see that's been positive for you around COVID um, in this past year going forward? What do you think that those positive lights are in that? Flexibility. I mean, yeah, I was gonna say flexibility is obviously the big, big one. Um, I think 
I mean, personally, I've gone full time. So like I started my business full, full time in the middle of the pandemic and without the tech of the various platforms that one can use, no names will be mentioned. So no one doesn't get fairly left out or, <laughs> or infringed. Um, but like without that, I wouldn't have been able to do the work that I did. I have literally coached people around the world as a result of, of the tech. Um, and just quite interestingly, a lot of people over Christmas were struggling with like, I'm only, I'm going to have a zoom Christmas because of all insert appropriate platform here. Um, for me, that's normal because my wife and I moved countries literally halfway around the world six years ago. And so for us, the last five have been tech Christmases. And so it was a different experience for us because we weren't the only ones doing it this year, which made it an interesting thing. But yeah, in terms of the work thing, I think the big things are the flexibility and also traditional models being disrupted to use Graham's word in, in the, in the sense of you have to be at work to tell me to prove that you're productive. No, I need to do my job to prove that I'm productive and the micromanaging of, well, you have to be here from X time to X time. Well, I'm done at three this day because I'm done. And the saving of the travel time that people have started to realize and the flexi commuting thing. I think that that's where big, big positives are going to come out of this long term. And Rory, um, while I have you talking too, tell us a little bit, it's been within the last year that you've really like launched your business and everything too. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And it's going to be the same for Graham too, I think, because it's been a pretty pivotal year for you guys. Um, so Rory, if you can She's say a little bit. She's used the P word. She's used it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Rory, I've got your website across the bottom um, that we've got uh, showcased here. So if you can tell us a little bit about um, what services you do offer. And I think they, if I understand correctly, they've probably been amplified quite quickly. Um, yeah. with COVID. So I guess from a business side, I would have to see that as a positive that you've yeah. been able to offer those services. So I am an executive and life coach as well as a corporate trainer. And I help businesses basically look after the humanity in them in terms of optimizing them as well as training, guiding, culture, values, vision. And one of the big things that I launched after launching the business last year was Coach on Call, which was a service where businesses can basically buy time, so it's paid but not on payroll, for the staff to just have a space to rage against the machine, talk about birds, talk about so-and-so from accounting who keeps stealing their stapler, whatever they needed to do, but to just sort of unwind and decompress from all that was going on around them in the world and everything last year. My biggest client, who was my anchor client that actually helped me go full time was a company who had a large fleet of people that were on the road 95% of their job and then were suddenly locked in their house 100% of the time. And so there was a small amount of stir crazy, um, but through being able to just process and chat, they were able to retain 100% of their staff, which was awesome. Um, and more importantly, the staff were really, really happy to have a space provided to them with no agenda. So it's not like, and just to be clear, I love HR people. They do amazing work. But if I go into HR and whinge about Steve from accounts who keeps stealing my stapler, and then Steve from accounts walks in the room, as a human, you've got that in, and part of you is going, how do I say don't steal staplers without saying don't steal staplers because I shouldn't really know that you steal the staplers, whereas <laughs> I'm completely independent. And so it's a different level of freedom and conversation. And, and I'll say this because it's important. I said to them all, there's a chance that in these conversations, somebody might leave and that's the right thing for the business because that's what's happened in their journey. And they were like, we understand and that's okay. And that for me is also really, really been exciting. Seeing people reconnect with a simplicity of mindfulness and 
all of that level of things, the, the, the conversations around mental health happening more and more and right. becoming into a, dare we say, acceptable thing to talk about. Whereas before it was like, oh, no, 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 you don't talk, no, you don't talk about that. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> um, and so it's been really, really exciting for me to just help people navigate last year and obviously into this year as well by doing the, the little bits and pieces to just help them fall in love with themselves again, because the person in the mirror is the first person you've got to love every day. And that's, that's really where it starts and finishes. And from there, if that relationship in, is in a great space, so much other goodness can happen. I think you just gave us a free sample of your services right there. Um, <laughs> thanks Rory for that. And Graham, um, I'm going to put your information across the bottom, but I do want to make sure we get to the question first, um, which probably also deals with what you do for business as well. But as far as how COVID has really helped you or seen positive from the workplace side, um, I'll let you have the stage. Well, yeah, I've just completely changed what I do. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I've done that P word thing without, you know, I don't, I hate that word. I really, <laughs> I really hate that word. Um, we're all on a journey, aren't we, in terms of both life and business. And at the end of the day, I just think you, you know, you kind of naturally arrive at, at where you should be. Um, and if God moves the mountains and, you know, opens up the streams, then actually it just helps along the way. And this, pandemic for me just uh gave me the kick up the backside that i needed in terms of <laughs> telling me that this was the right time to to change what i was doing so i I'd, I'd come out of a uh, a tenure of of working within the assistive technology uh field which was fun for about five and a half years prior to that i'd been involved in workplace assessments for uh more time than I, I can care to remember <laughs> and um you know and i i i thought look i'm going to step back into uh because you know i have to earn money because otherwise you you know the 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 children suffer <laughs> um and the wife gets a bit angry so um i thought i'll step back into a, a, that that business again and and i you know started getting it back on the road and doing workplace assessments again um but I, in the throes of all of that, I've, I've always had a passion for media. I've always, I've I started life in radio. I started life as a, as a, a broadcast journalist as well. Um, and I, I thought, you know what, I'm just looking here at what both the industry that I've just come out of and the industry that I've been involved with for many, many years this ergonomics industry uh, are, are doing in terms of social media and it's it's dreadful <laughs> you know um and i just thought look my my passion's always been about how do we communicate really important topics and subjects to people that we are passionate and you know deeply feel deeply about to joe public over here who actually doesn't know what's a lie what's the truth doesn't doesn't understand you know who who's actually preaching for good and who's actually just preaching to make money how do how we how do we get their attention in the right way um and just looking at it and getting involved with it and doing some stuff for free which is a really good way of uh, starting a business folks just do it for free to begin with um and, and prove prove a point i just found that you know i was seeing that people were were just doing the same old same old you know and i'd been there on the circuit as, as someone that's been a business development manager for for many years in in different businesses as well as being involved in the uh, um uh, as well as being involved in the assessment piece you know I've I've done all of that bit where I'd go to a trade show one week and then at that trade show you you'd say and I'll see you 
next week at uh, which which hotel are you staying oh yeah, yeah and i'll see you there and then you get to that show and it's all the same people and you pat them all on the back again and then you say oh you're doing that show next week yeah and who do you see at that show all of the people you saw at the last show and you're just going around having the same old conversation with the same old people and it's all very nice but what does it actually achieve how do you reach that group of people over there that don't even know that they need to hear this this message um, and that's what i started looking at and i just thought there's a better way to do this a better way of life and uh and that's why mm. <laughs> And that's and that's where the conversation came in. And that's and that's that's why the title as well, because, you know, for me, it's it's not about product and it's not about service. It's not it's about lifestyle. The, the thing that binds us and connects us and keeps us together on the planet is life. And all of us are striving towards trying to find a better way of living. All right. So when you want to reach out and touch people and, and have a conversation with people, it's not about trying to sell to them because they don't want you to do that. What they want to do is for you to tap into something about their their interests, their life, etc., that resonates with them. And they want to be in a space where it's exciting about that that particular thing. And then if you can find a way within that space of saying, oh, by the way, why not? You need to hear this as well. Right. Now that we're in this space together, there may be room to talk about ergonomics because it actually may have a relevance to you. That's what then works, because actually you're making it connected to their life and to where they want to be in life. It's nothing to do with, you know, hey, this is the greatest cup of tea in the world. Today, <laughs> you will buy it because it has a stag on the front. You know, I mean, it's just it's just awful what some people were doing on LinkedIn and other social media platforms in order to, to get across their message. Um, and so that's where I started working. Um, and it's taken time, but... It's all going very well. Thank you very much. Good. Very good. And I would say um, for myself too, I mean, I'm with Kensington and Graham and I connected, like I said, six plus months ago as he was starting this journey. And um, it's been great to connect with both Graham and Rory um, because Rory being more so focused on that mental health side and Graham coming from a lot of different angles of ergonomics and learning behaviors and accessibility um, it really has allowed us to have a lot of meaningful conversations around the world that I never could have had prior to, co I could have, um, but prior to COVID, I wasn't looking at that as an angle because my mind was so focused on other aspects of business. Um, and, you know, with Kensington, I come from a background of ergonomic consulting. So, my passion first and foremost is helping people find solutions, whether it's equipment or behavior based to really get them comfortable. Um, I've spoke about it in previous uh, LinkedIn lives that the reason I even got into ergonomics to begin with was not because I thought, oh, this is gonna be a really prosperous career to sell uh, mice and keyboards and backrest and all that kind of thing. Um, but I actually was in five car accidents within two years um, wow. Only one was my fault. I always have to say that, that you can still ride with me. I am a safe driver. Um, but I was in my early <laughs> <laughs> When I tell people that as soon as they get in my car, they're like, can, can I get out now? Um, <laughs> so with that being said, I was in my early 20s at that point and could not sit at a desk job. And here I am with a college degree and ready to work, ready to be successful, and I, I can't do the daily function. So um, through research and discovery and the help of where I was at currently in my career, I worked at a chiropractor's office and they were willing to explore other options and the ergonomic piece of it was becoming this buzzword um, to help get clients to her office. If we could help with growing a patient base, 
then we could also help those individuals too. So starting from there um, and then going into consulting for a larger company brought me to Kensington so that I can really have that full grasp of what people are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I have to say that ergonomics is finally starting to get the recognition it deserves for the value that it holds with COVID. So I see that as a huge win in this past year that my neighbors are asking me if there's a product in our portfolio that would fit X, Y, or Z because now they've been stuck at home for a year. Um, some of my family no longer thinks I sell mattresses because they'd heard of the Ergo mattress. So, you know, there's these different things that suddenly people know what we sell. Um, and this is pre-Kensington even, you know, that they understand what ergonomics means um, and what that value is of having a product that does fit your hand well or it does adjust to the right level. Um, and so understanding that besides me just trying to sell you a specific product, um, they're living that and breathing it and they're seeking help not only for um, their personal life, but looking into their work uh, life as well. So that's that's my big win for COVID that there's finally recognition there. Um, and I think of Rory, even, you know, you're not specifically in the ergonomic world, but I'm so impressed. It makes my heart so happy when I hear people that are not specifically in that world and they know about ergonomics, that that was not happening um, in years prior. So I, I love that. You say that, but you see, I think he is. <laughs> he, that's, that's, that's the thing to me. Here's me being disruptive. I think he is in the ergonomics world because actually I just, I, I don't see it as sections. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that I'm, I have started to see and I'd like to see more of. Um, and we'll talk later probably about the, the, the event that we do every month where it tries to break all of these different fractions down. But that's really what's so important here is that, you know, I think prior to COVID as well, from a professional side, everything's been ergonomics and then mental health yeah. and then and everything's been in silos. You know, and the way we treat people or the way we deal with people within an organization has been in these silos. The trouble with that is that people <laughs> don't exist in silos. Exactly. Yep. People exist like that. You know, there are there are a whole person and a bit of them is this and a bit of them is that. Um, and that's why I think it's really important to uh, just say that there are experts that deal with humans <laughs> and you know and it's uh and and we and it's it's in a, no different than saying you know you may need a doctor for this you may need a you know the doctor can only specialize to a point that you may need therefore a chiropractor the chiropractor needs to work with the as you mentioned it yourself the chiropractor may need to work alongside an ergonomist who can recommend the the bits of kit that actually can stop that thing that they're working on in terms of rehabilitation from coming back again but this person's in pain at the same time how are they dealing with their pain mentally they may not be they may need to be talking to someone there's a man you know <laughs> and and that's that's the really important thing so you know for me it's one of the things that i'd really love to see moving forward is people getting away from these silos and actually you know, it, it'd be more a case of actually we're all in the same sector in a way, because actually we're all about dealing with people. And it's about that holistic approach. Well, to, I was to waiting people. for the H-bomb. There it is. <laughs> Boom. Have you, is the, um, is the total worker health a topic of conversation in the UK or is that more so US based at this point? Are it's you guys familiar? Up. It's definitely okay. on the up. And I think that the last year has definitely dialed that up to 12. It's still a very small speaker, so it might be at 12, but it's not a big noise just yet. But it is infiltrating more and more conversations. And that's why when I look at companies to possibly go and speak to, I don't necessarily just go in as me. I'll maybe speak to like 
the potentially like the two of you and be like hi we've got a holistic offering for <laughs> your entire staff and but and this is the big thing and i say this with respect but it used to be a case of you had to sort of go through the wallet to get the heart and mind and i think that the the wallets have realized that they have a major part to play in the success of the hearts and minds with minimal investment because the ex like the exponential benefits of less churn less sick days and 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 are x times what they invest in a keyboard a chap to talk to a guy to come in and help do an assessment and 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 whatever team that they assemble to help them as a business and mm. more and more businesses are going okay it's going to cost me this but i could save or make that and that second part is becoming part of the whole workplace health right work thing conversation yeah i think it's interesting i attended a couple of those conferences that graham spoke so nicely about that the trade shows happening every week and that type of thing um, and one of the hot topics there was starting to be, and this was right before COVID happened, um, was that total work health piece. And I would just watch because I've been involved in several of those silos throughout my career. And I would watch the people's reactions that typically they were in health and safety or specifically ergonomics. And I'd been in the HR world. Um, and so seeing the people's reactions of like, is this going to take my job or, oh, I could never do that. Um, I think this past year has been a really pivotal time to crush those silos and see that it is a group effort to get there. Absolutely. Having an expert, but knowing what that expertise is and then being able to call on those other experts and phone a friend um, yeah. for some help there too. So um, I think that this has been, a really positive conversation. I, like I said, I personally can't focus on the negative um, because let's face it, every day we'll start feeling the same if we're only looking at the negative side. Um, so I guess um, the final question I had for you guys um, is, you know, what's some advice that you could give to others? I think some advice has been given throughout, but what do you feel like, Graham laughs, there's always advice being given, right? Um, but what do you think is like one piece of advice that you could give to someone to be in a positive side or a positive outlook, um, whether personal or work related around COVID? Wow. Radio silence. Okay, I'll go. And this is actually something I often will say to anybody starting a, co starting a coaching journey with me. So I will give this for free. An awe, wonder and joy diary is something beautiful to have in your world now it's not a gratitude journal which are a great thing to do and don't stop doing them if you're doing them but i can be grateful for my water bottle it's not necessarily going to bring me a happy heart moment other than if i'm really thirsty and it's beautiful cold water but if i ask people to describe their week or their day they're going to use negative feeling words to tell me about how rubbish it's been if you can at the end of a day find one thing that brought you either all wonder or joy and write it down over time you learn to see those which means that you bring balance doesn't mean the rubbish stuff stops happening no it doesn't but it means that you don't just see one side of it you see balance so for me and this is something i'll encourage everyone to do an all wonder and joy diary because on the worst of the worst of the worst days a brilliant cup of hot chocolate can be your moment and there's almost always one moment in every day. Great advice. Graham, can you follow that up with even better or same advice? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, uh, it's, um, I'll, just, I'll just have a sip of my very, very nice tea. Um, <laughs> no, for me, for me, everything comes back down to communication. And I just think um, we just have to get better at communication as well. Um, I think we've needed to, to learn to listen again in, in this time of COVID. I think we've had to stop on occasions and actually listen to what the world is saying. And we've certainly listened in terms of, you know, 
climate change, etc. We've seen the benefit. Now we need to start and listen to what the world is telling us in that change and, and actually then think about what we what we do in terms of response to that. Um, but I think, you know, on a day to day basis as well, with with coping with anything as well, we just have to stop and make proper time to listen in conversations as well. And I think when it comes to being online and things like tech, etc., as well, um, just make time to listen in those communications as well. So don't, you know, if if it's all, you know, putting it out there, putting it out there, putting it out there, but never stopping and listening to what other people are saying back. Just that's where you need to rebalance. You need to stop and listen to what other people are saying back to you. Uh, and then then then, you know, think about it and then respond to it. Um, so the, the bit that we have to get better is 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 communication. Um, you know, we've seen some great communication, though, in this period. I mean, if you think about vaccines, for example, and how quickly these vaccines have come together, that's only happened because of really great communication between the companies that are and the researchers that are involved in getting that these answers from around the world right we have never ever seen a vaccine of any description put together quite so quickly around the world and and so many scientists coming together that is a really good example of what happens when people communicate really well we can produce a vaccine within a six month window, which would normally take 15 years. So if that isn't if that isn't a great example to the rest of mankind as to, you know, improve your communication skills, <laughs> then what is? For sure. Yeah, that's great advice as well. Um, I think for myself, it's thinking about personal lessons I've learned. And as I mentioned before, in my example of just trying to pack my day and I'm a planner and just trying to think six months in advance and people that knew me um, knew that I might plan a vacation um, or a different holiday like 16 months in advance because it was something to look forward to. Um, that's the face my husband gives me too, Graham, when I say, hey, let's do this a year from now. He's like, seriously? <laughs> So I think the biggest lesson for COVID um, right now, as far as advice I could give others, is really to just take a breath and live in the day, live in the now, and just appreciate everything you have. It goes back to a lot of the things that we talked about, um, but making sure, you know, that you and your family and friends are comfortable um, today and that you have what you need to get your work done, um, but don't worry about what six months from now looks like and there's so many different moving parts to COVID that even with the vaccines becoming more available um, there's still so many unknowns that I have had to learn and I feel like many others as well just focus on the now take a beat and continue yeah I know Rory there you go um, and continue to just live your life in the way that you feel happiness and finding those pieces to find happiness there. So um, I did want to bring up, uh, normally I would do a product spotlight, but I want to advertise something different today other than a product. Um, Graham alluded to it, but we do do a um, health and well-being event um, each month, and there's several um, vendors that help put this on with Graham. Um, Kensington is one of them, but they've been a really good way to crush those silos that we were talking about today. Um, and I think, Graham, they've evolved a lot from where they've started, from what I understand, um, only talking about ergonomics or you know, maybe being more product-based. And now it really is this source of what I believe um, is a great source of networking, but then also looking at some of these trending topics um, that might be outside my personal comfort zone as the expert in ergo, um, but finding something that other people are trying to do to get that balance. So Graham, do you want to talk a little bit about what the next one has to offer on the 25th of February? Yeah, no, absolutely. So the next one, we're actually delving into the world of 
that I've just come out of, of assistive technology. But what's really interesting about it and what will be interesting about the speakers that are coming along to do this as well, because I, I kind of tell them that they've got to have a, a set agenda, um, is that they're not going to take it from the perspective of assistive technology that is quite often in their silo talked about, which is how assistive technology helps people with particular disabilities or particular cognitive issues, etc. But what they're actually going to do is they're going to talk about assistive technology in terms of how it can make a real difference to everybody. And that's that's one of the things that I really like about this area is that and it's what got me into the area in the first place, because I came from the ergonomic side of things like you did, Lisa, but it was being in, involved in that world but seeing what was going on in the assistive tech world that made me think well hang on a minute why are these two areas not combining <laughs> why are why are we not talking about the same thing i'll give a, a a really quick example of that which is you know if you um if someone's got a a, a really bad back and they they you know they need to as part of their rehabilitation get up and walk on a regular basis at work you, from an ergonomist point of view, you know, you can do as much as possible in terms of a, a better chair or a sit stand desk or anything like that. But, you know, one of the things that I, I started doing years ago, actually, now was saying, well, do you actually have to work at the desk? <laughs> why, why does all of your work have to work at the desk? And when you get technologies, uh, Rory did a post. You see, he is a he is an ergonomist. <laughs> Rory did a post the other day about Otter, which my wife uses as well. It's a it's a it's a voice app on a phone, um, and you can you can talk into it and it translates. Yeah, it, it turn, turns what you say into into text. But but such a powerful thing, right? And yeah, you know, understanding these technologies and these these um, assistive technologies as they were that that have been designed to help break down barriers for some people, but they can break down barriers for so many more. Yeah. And whether it's just getting that work done half the, half the speed in the day, uh, uh, twice the speed in the day, so in half the time, or whether it's, uh, you know, just helping you organize your, your day or your time or your faults or your, or the processes better, so you're not the first person in the office in the day and the last person out. All of these things help in terms of your health and well-being. And it, it helps on the um, ergonomic side of things as well, because you and I will go and tell everybody that we meet, you need to take more breaks. But if people can't take breaks because they can't see where they can possibly fit a break in during the day because of their workload, then we have to do we have to approach that from a slightly different angle um and you know so that's what we'll be looking at on the on the day um hopefully everybody's going to learn again learn from each other that that particular silo of people that will come in <laughs> you know will learn a little bit more about the, the the sort of pain points and the and the the, the things that um people from an economist point of view are, tr are trying to do etc and then we're doing another one in march which will all be around diet and nutrition which again affects your mental health your mood your, your you know if you're if you're uh, putting on weight that can affect your physicality as well so to me all these things are connected and uh it's good to you know good to broaden that network so if people want a free ticket they just have to go to my website, www.abetterwayoflife.co.uk. Uh, you'll see online events. You just click the button and, and register in Remo. It's free. So it doesn't get any cheaper than that, folks. And it's with people from all over the world. You know, it started as a UK thing, but there's been quite a few people from Canada, other parts of Europe, as well as the US that all have been able to join um, I know you've posted about it on LinkedIn as well. So um, typically we're dropping the registration link there. Um, I've posted about it a few times and will still before the event too. So I'd love to see many of you guys um, at that event and be able to network further with you guys. Um, I think they've been great. Um, I've met so many people through um, those events as well as just connecting on LinkedIn 
you can see our names on the screen that you might be connected with one of us if you're seeing this today, but definitely connect with us, reach out if you have any questions. <laughs>